Hi there, my name is Lauren and I got an A star in A level biology and I wanted to share how I got that and how you can do the same. In this video I'm going to go through the entire two years of A level biology, not, not the actual content because we would be here literally forever, but going through how I learned the content, revising for topic tests, revising for mocks and then revising for the real exams. Learning the content. The first thing that people will tell you when you do A-level biology is how much content there is. Because there is so much content, I think one of the most important things is building up long-term memory so that when it comes to the real exams, it's much more about perfecting your exam technique rather than trying to learn or memorize the content. So one of the first things I did with learning the content in A-level biology, aside from the actual lessons, is doing pre-notes before the class. If you don't know what pre-notes is, it's basically when you look over the chapter in the textbook or you watch a YouTube video and you basically write notes for what's going to be covered in the lesson before actually going to the lesson. And there's two reasons why I did this in year 12. One, I wanted to make sure that I was covering all of the content. Um, and also it meant that when I was going into the lessons, I could properly engage with what the teacher was presenting. Um, rather than having to like scribble down loads of notes. Another benefit of doing pre-notes is that you can then go into the lesson with questions and you can get your teacher to clarify any areas which you didn't understand. And this repeated exposure to content multiple times helps to build long-term memory. A more specific tip for doing pre-notes and also just general revision and re-going over the content is to use Miss Estrick biology videos. She seriously so good <laughs> there's so much content but she really like condenses it down into what you e exactly what you need to know whereas the textbook let me let me get it for you the textbook is chunky and it's got a lot of information in it which i feel like you don't need which is kind of good in one way for pre-notes because it means you're having to condense it yourself into your own words which helps to understand it more rather than just writing it down like copying it from the textbook if you're looking for more speed and also i feel like someone teaching it to you verbally can sometimes be easier to understand it miss estrick is really good for that some topics like photosynthesis and respiration those bigger topics with loads of concepts within them loads of new words don't worry if you don't pick them up straight away in terms of actually understanding it and learning it for me respiration and photosynthesis the first time I did pre-notes on it, didn't understand it. It was just like a different language going in. Second time being exposed to it in lessons, again, I wasn't really absorbing that much of the content. But as you keep on going over these topics through revision, you will understand it and you'll think, oh, my little fetus brain <laughs> just couldn't, couldn't comprehend what it was. I feel like this goes without saying, but it is so important to be in the actual lessons. As for me, like there were a couple of times where I'd missed a couple of lessons in biology because of trips and stuff like that. I really notice how much less I remembered the content from those lessons. Like I missed a lesson in the nutrient cycles and for the life of me, it took me so many attempts to actually learn myself, not because it was difficult content, but just to actually make it stick in my head, that nitrate cycle, I lit the nitrogen cycle. It took me so many attempts to make it stick in my head whereas other things because I've been in lessons that just it stuck in my head more. Now we're moving on to revising for topic tests. Personally I don't think it's possible to get an A star without properly revising for these topic tests because by spending a lot of time and intensely revising for these smaller chunks of the whole A level content you're creating this long-term memory and you're ensuring that you understand completely all of the content. Whereas if you leave actually revising properly for these tests until year 13, there's just too much content and you won't be able to absorb it all. And it will also be super stressful because you'll just see this list of stuff that you need to memorize. So take the opportunity that you're only having to learn a small portion of the content with topic tests and really revise for them. I feel like A-levels, particularly A-level biology, require a change in mindset in terms of how you revise. Doing exam questions is just as, if not more important than revising the content. As you could do so much revision on the content, as in going over the content in textbooks, through videos, writing flashcards, blurting, all of those techniques, and you could still end up with a C or a D because 
you don't know what the actual question is wanting from you. And because A-level biology, the mark schemes are so specific, if you're not doing enough exam technique and exam practice, then you are going to lose marks. You're just not going to get marks, even though what you're writing down could technically be correct. So my revision went in two phases, making sure I understood completely all of the content and then moving on to exam questions with basically 50% on content, 50% on exam questions. I'm going to go into a lot of detail and maybe you might not find this interesting or helpful, but I'm just going to go through exactly how I re would revise for topic tests because I did it pretty much the same throughout all of them. About a week and a half before the actual test, I would start my revision by going through the physics and maths tutor flashcards. These are really useful as they go through the whole of the content of the topic. I would write down my answers and then see exactly what I'd gotten wrong or what I couldn't remember and write that down in a different coloured pen. At the start, this would actually be a lot for me, just because I have a really poor short term memory. I need to go over something a lot of times for it to like actually stick. After that, I would then leave it a couple of days, do some specific revision on the parts of the topic which I just completely have forgotten or didn't really understand by mainly using Miss Estrick Biology. I would then do the flashcards again a couple of days later since the last time I'd done it. Again, writing down my answers, physically writing them down, not just seeing the question on the screen and going, oh yeah, I know that, and then going on to the thing and then saying, oh yeah, I, I, know, I knew what that was written. That's not properly revising. Actually write down your answers and write down exactly what you got wrong. And you will see a massive improvement from the first time that you did it. So that is my learning the content method. I would also do blurting from time to time. I think I did that at the very start of year 12 when I was figuring out my revision techniques, but this flashcard method worked best for me and that's what I carried on from like the end of year 12 through 13. The next phase is doing exam questions. You can find the exam questions for the specific topic you're being tested on on Physics and Maths Tutor. I would do these questions the first time, a good few days, maybe five days before the actual test. And trust me, I would get very, very few marks. So I would do it all and then I would use the mark scheme and in a different colour pen I would write down where I got an answers wrong um, and I would mark it really strictly against the mark scheme. And even if I'd gotten the question right and there were other answers which were correct, I would write those other answers down as well from the mark scheme. I would then on the front of the paper, I would write down the questions or the marks which I was consistently losing. Say if there was a keyword that I was not writing down for a question. For example, saying postsynaptic membrane and me forgetting to write membrane down, I would very boldly write that across the front of the paper just to make sure I wasn't making these mistakes repeatedly. I would then, like the day before the actual exam or test, I would then do this set of exam questions again and the improvement will be huge. <laughs> Trust me, if you're doing this repeated kind of technique of doing one thing and then leaving a couple of days and then doing it again you will see the improvement and then by the time i actually do the test you will know the answers basically using mark schemes almost feels like cheating but it's allowed because you're literally learning what the exact answers the exam board wants from you to write on your paper now revising for marks this is where it gets a little bit more difficult just because the amount of content is then combined together and you've got all of the content from the topic test which you have revised for but you have most likely forgotten. <laughs> Just because there is so much content, it might be in the back of your head somewhere, but you need to help pull it out back to the front of your mind because you haven't looked at this content in quite a number of months. For me to just build up that confidence in the content again, what I would do is I would create consolidation sheets. I say consolidation sheets, they're really big A3 sheets. I'll go get them. For example, this is one on cells. For each topic, I would roughly have about three to four of these sheets. So they're consolidation sheets, but there's so much content in biology that this is, it's going to be a lot. But for me, I found it really reassuring to know that I had every bit of the content down and I knew I wasn't missing anything out. And to make these, again, I used my queen, Miss Biology. That meant that I could go through these videos in 1.5 times speed and write down exactly what I needed to know. And then it means when you then get to the actual A-levels and you prefer to revise content off of 
flashcards or sheets like this or you want somebody to test you on the content you already have these things made and you don't have to rush to try and make them for the whole year's content because you've already done half of them for your year 12 mocks so i did that it was then again exam questions exam questions exam questions i did all of the papers for as biology so they have all of the past papers for as biology which is good because then you can revise only the year 12 content um for your end of year 12 ucas mocks and i would go into more specific topic areas which i was losing the most marks on and I would just do those specific exam question sheets on physics and maths tutor. I do need my glasses, it's just the reflection in them was really distracting. So we're just going to leave them off the rest of the video. Revising for the real exam. To do this, I mainly focused on exam questions. By that point, you have already revised the content so many times through topic tests and then also the two mocks that you've already had. Um, which again I was using the consolidation sheet so I'd gone over all of the content many times before which meant that I could just go straight into doing exam questions. The first thing I did was get unit tests from my teachers so I asked my teachers for a topic test like the topic test I'd been doing throughout the year which meant that I could ensure that I was understanding completely all of the topics and also seeing where my areas of weakness are for example, for me, I struggled on uh, DNA technologies. So topic eight was something I struggled on and also things like succession and communities. Those were the topics that I struggled on in particular, which meant that I could see that based on my scores from the topic tests and go back over them and do further exam questions on them to understand them. I also had a document where I wrote down for each of these topic tests what my repeated mistakes were so i had a list of common mistakes which was actually really helpful before going into each exam as i could just reassure my nerves i could like calm down a little bit i would read through this document and it would just make sure that i wasn't going to make these mistakes again it would just jogger in my mind like okay fine don't forget to write membrane down or specific key terms definitions and you can do this throughout the year but i just decided to do it right at the end once you know your weaknesses i want you to turn those weaknesses into strengths so these topics which you were originally losing marks on do so many exam questions on them that when you see it in the exam you're like yes i know exactly how to do that you're almost wanting these topics to come up because you've done so much revision on them another important thing to mention is do not ignore maths questions Ironically, I did maths A-level and the maths questions was where I was losing the most marks in A-level biology. Just because, one, they're more difficult to revise because the mark scheme is so vague. A lot of the time they won't give any of the steps and so you kind of have to figure it out yourself. For me, I found going onto YouTube and looking through um, paper walkthroughs really helpful in understanding how to, how to do these questions. Also, I did just a lot of them. I did loads of the maths questions in particular um, and this helped to improve it. Things like Hardy Weinberg and the inheritance questions which have a maths element in them. These are things which are easier to learn and they come up again and again and again so really pay attention to if you actually understand Hardy Weinberg and how to do inheritance questions because you know that they're going to come up. So during study leave, I did all of the papers and tracked my scores on each of them. I had a little on OneNote, I had a tracker and I would write down exactly what score I got on each of the papers. And this meant that once I had finished all of the exam papers, I could go back to the ones which I scored the worst on and try and improve my score. One thing to mention is paper three. I feel like a lot of people get to, they do, they do all the past papers for paper one and paper two and then they're like oh paper three is just a mix of paper one and paper two it's fine i don't need to revise for it that is so wrong because i personally found paper three a lot harder just because of the amount of application questions within it paper three in particular it's a lot more difficult to understand what they actually want from you and so it requires extra revision on that paper to be able to spot when they want you to write down the whole of the photosynthesis process and they won't ask for it but you need to be able to pick up on the cues within the question whether that's what they want you to do. Me, revising the essay was actually really helpful in 
learning the big longer mark questions so like the six mark questions on synaptic transmission or things like that which have the longer mark questions by revising the essay you're also revising those questions that is how i got an a star in a level biology i hope this was helpful that's the end of this video if you have any more questions uh, just put them in the comments down below i hope you enjoyed this video and good luck with your a levels